Welcome to the final episode of Series 36, everyone. It's out a bit later than usual due to all sorts of life happening, but we made it. I'm really excited to have you hear this episode, especially the spectacular fanfic section. But before we get to that, some announcements, as usual. First up, if you've been following my Chimera campaign on Twitch at twitch.chimera.games, you would know that this coming Friday, we will be in the final stages of our horror module playthrough where we face the unknown and fight a giant kaiju monstrosity, which should be super interesting. My players have all been remarkable and I cannot wait to see how they tackle this one. You can catch all the action starting at 7.30 p.m. Central Time this coming Friday. Secondly, if you have liked what you've heard in the series so far, the Kickstarter for Tension is live until the end of the month. It's already funded within the first day, which is absolutely fantastic. And I would love to see it pushed past the $2,800 mark to get the form fillable character sheets created for easier online play. Head on over to the show notes to find the link to that project and back it if you haven't yet. Lastly, we are always in the need for more reviews nowadays. So if you haven't had a chance to leave one, we both would really appreciate it. I know it's been just me this whole series, but I'd love to get back to reading more of these with Amelia when we are able to record together again, uh, which will likely be the next series. So if you could help us out and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Stitcher, or wherever else, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, that is all for now, so please join us after the show for the call to action and the outtakes as usual on the last episode of the series. For now, enjoy the show, everyone. Back to our discussion episode. Last time we created a detective, a murderer, and 20 connected characters for tension. Uh, this episode we will be discussing the character creation process. We are very thrilled to welcome back Adira Slattery, designer of this game. Do you want to reintroduce yourself again for everyone at home and tell us a little bit about the main character that you made in our last episode? Yeah, hi, uh, my name's Adira Slattery. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Adira Slattery, uh, and you can get my games at adira.itch.io. Uh, and Tension itself, uh, you can get coming to Kickstarter uh, on February 14th. Which should have been yesterday if you're listening to this the day of release. Oh, perfect. Let's yeah. let's hope that it's, it's smashing everything and... It's made uh, a bajillion million dollars. And <laughs> <laughs> me oh, and uh, Dominique and Francita are getting just piles of money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, throw piles of money their way. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Yeah. So uh, the main character that I made in our last episode mm -hmm. uh, is the investigator. Uh, she is a journalist named Heather. Uh, she has uh, dirty glasses uh, and wears a leather jacket and... Uh, in her pockets are often found empty pill bottles and chewed pens. Mm -hmm. uh, and she has an obsession with grisly accidents. Mm -hmm. All right. And, uh, Ryan, uh, how about your main character? Yeah. And I created uh, the killer uh, known as Alexa. Uh, she, her pronouns. Uh, she is a driven killer, uh, killing for a purpose. Um, and uh, her looks are... Uh, she has an easy laugh, uh, a tailored suit, piercing eyes, and fun socks. Um, and her pattern uh, for her murders is she always leaves 
a flash drive with a cryptic video on it uh, with Alexa's voice narrating. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so I'm really excited to talk about this game. So let's go ahead and uh, dive right into a segment that we are calling a D20 for your thoughts. D20 for your thoughts. So in this segment, we want to talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process and how it relates to this system and to other games. But first, we like to get to know our guests a little better before we begin. Uh, now, it has been a while, and I can't remember if we covered with this with you uh, when you were a guest co-host. Uh, so just in case, uh, can you tell us how you got into RPGs in the first place? Oh, yeah. Um so when I was seven years old, um, I uh, watched this episode of Batman the Animated Series mm. uh, where Batman gets stuck in a maze with a minotaur, right? Okay. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, and uh, I came up with a game around drawing mazes. Uh, mm-hmm. Me and my friend Holden would play it on the back of worksheets at Hebrew school um, uh, where I would draw a maze on the back and I'd put some letters in mm. there. Uh, and he would move his finger through the maze, and when he would hit a letter, if it was like a D, it'd be like, oh, you hit a dragon. Or if it was a, mm-hmm. a T, it'd be like, oh, there's a, a big uh, T-Rex or something. Yeah. The, the letter would show the, the first beginning of the, the challenge, and then we would narrate okay. it out together, the two of us, and then we'd keep going. And I showed oh. this to my dad. Uh, my dad was like, oh, this is like this thing I played in the 80s. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, he threw the... Uh, uh, 1983 basic edition of Dungeons and Dragons at me. Oh, wow. Um, uh, and so I played uh, uh, basic D&D uh, throughout elementary school. Mm-hmm. Uh, 3.0 came out pretty soon there. I played that with um, uh, my older brother mm-hmm. uh, DMing for me and my dad. Then I started running games for my friends in middle school. Oh, nice. Um, uh, and I kept playing role-playing games. Uh I searched and found and played every single edition of D&D. I learned how to play chain mail. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to uh, college, I got really into LARPing mm-hmm. and uh, uh, branched out. In high school, I was playing non-D&D games like, mm-hmm. like GURPS and like the, the Firefly Cortex system. Oh, okay. But uh, in college is when I like really branched out into like uh, Amber Diceless LARPs and uh, Nobilis games mm-hmm. and uh, Lady Blackbird and and all sorts of things of that that ilk and uh, yeah and I started writing LARPs. Uh, I used to write like big uh, like forty person parlor LARPs with like multi page backstories for every single character and things like mm-hmm. that. Um, and then. I started writing weird experimental <laughs> role playing games. Uh, and now we're here. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, this one definitely uh, feels pretty unique uh, in terms of uh, what what we've covered so far. So uh, I'm really excited uh, about this one. Mm-hmm. So, what is your personal process then for creating characters in any system? So, uh, to me, it depends on sort of what my goals are. Mm-hmm. Uh, for like play at that moment, um, like if it's like I'm I'm playing a bunch of Lancer recently, and then that since it's a more like uh, traditional tactical combat yeah. sort of game, I'm thinking about uh, like the specific like niche that my character is fitting, like mm. tactics wise. Uh, I've been playing a character who does a lot of like support stuff, so. Like mechanically, I oftentimes find myself gravitating towards filling a hole, yeah. um, especially in mechanically heavy systems like that. And then I just build my character from there based off of like flipping through the lore and being like, ooh, this is a cool thing. Or just being like, I want to like play a shit bag and then I play a shit bag. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, uh, I... Uh, I'm playing like a long running campaign of uh, masks for mm-hmm. like the first time uh, uh, throughout like pandemic uh, now. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, that one also was less uh, it's, 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 it's different from like these like traditional mechanical stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, since it's uh, a PBTA game, um, there's not like tactical combat and stuff like that. So when I thought about character creation there, it was less about like filling a hole and mm -hmm. more about like, well, what sort of tropes and stories really resonate with me and really do I want to explore right now? Right. Um, uh, so I ended up making, uh, uh, X villain, uh, type that reformed, uh, it was a, a pirate. Mm hmm. Uh, cause being a pirate is fun. <laughs> um, yeah. All those illegal downloads. Mm -hmm. No, no, this is, this is, this is swashbuckling with a sword and stuff. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, uh, pretty much objectively probably more fun. Mm. <laughs> that's very cool. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's get into a discussion about, uh, tension itself then. Um, how do we think character creation in this game uh, stacks up to other systems that we've played and created characters for. Um, so tension in this game uh, and character creation in this uh, draws heavily from uh, the uh, uh, like belonging outside belonging, no dice, no master style pick lists, right? Okay. Uh, so people who have played either of the influences that I mentioned before, great games by Jay and by uh, Jamie, uh, or if they've, looked at dream askew dream apart um mm -hmm. uh they're familiar with that sort of idea of uh, like looking at an evocative list of options and, and yeah. picking from there and sort of building from there mm -hmm. it's it's designed to sort of like have you hit the ground running and give you a lot of room in play to uh, like jump off of things oh yeah absolutely yeah it was it was very simplistic it was it didn't require um, you know, like any sort of min maxing or anything like that. I, I don't even think that's possible in this game. No. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so it's nice because it's, it feels very, uh, very relaxed and the, the character creation itself feels, um, I, I want to say low stakes Mm. until you get to the part where you realize that you're killing these characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so it, having never played it before, having never created characters for it before, I didn't realize that until we were <laughs> almost done. And then I was like, oh, no. Yeah. I love these people, though. <laughs> the, the literal first action of the game, uh, the killer plays one of the major arcana and that person starts out dead oh no <laughs> Ooh, could okay we're gonna have to do that for our fanfic portion i believe uh so i am very interested to see who gets killed yeah yeah oh no oh that's so sad but yeah my goodness L low stakes until you know uh and then it's then it's kind of it's it still feels like laid back Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like, OK, we're, we're, we're just creating a couple cool NPCs and mm -hmm. figuring out how they relate to ourselves and relate to each other. Um, I really like that. And I really like how a game about uh, romance uh, eventually uh, is is very much has the, this simplistic, uh, but uh, very intricate uh, relationship system. Mm -hmm. going on through it because uh, we have relationships to one another uh, pretty implicitly through all of these side characters. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, like traditional PBTA and whatnot, they've got like, oh, your character and this character uh, know each other because of this thing that happened mm -hmm. in the past or whatever. It's like, that's all fine and good, but this is all like uh inferencing like everything about our relationship to one another and that sounds really fun to untangle during a play session yeah it's a little more like breathing living breathing than than yeah. other sort of more uh because like a lot of those sorts of relationship things in in your pbta game uh are about uh like backstory right mm -hmm. uh, and like sure we're, we're we're doing a fair amount of backstory generation here uh with these relationships but also it's it's front story too <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly um 
and it would be interesting to see how how this would play out um like deciding on doing a different setting mm -hmm. per se because we we just kind of defaulted to you know modern reality yeah effectively but uh this would be fun on like a um like a starship from star trek or yeah. um you know space fantasy or you know traditional fantasy type stuff and mm -hmm. and kind of tweak the the different roles and and everything i think that would be really interesting oh there's so many good good possibilities here yeah i wrote a whole thread on twitter uh because i i published the like first look of tension in uh, uh december because i just really wanted to show it to people so i like mm -hmm. put together this really quick layout um uh and like threw it up with no edit. There's, there's a, every time I look, there's a, there's a typo in, in the word parent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I look at it and I'm like, this is why I pay people to edit. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, but, um, when, when that came out, I, I made a whole thread that was like all of like different things that you could, uh, like make hacks of for attention that were, they were like calling out some things and uh, yes, here we go. Ooh. All right. Um, list of hacks, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Hades and Persephone, Ooh. uh, the, uh, neo noir buddy film, the nice guys. Okay. Uh, time travel romance stories, uh, uh such as the time traveler's wife. This is how you lose the time war or edge of tomorrow. Okay. Um, Oh, Oh, uh, immortal warriors encountering each other, uh, a la Highlander, uh, being uh, lovers who are in uh, doing dog fights. Um, you could even push it even farther to be like uh, rival monarchs or like rival 1800 scientists. Yeah. Um, uh, and I mean, you could also just do the classic bodice ripper. Oh, yeah. Very nice. And you could uh, you could almost uh, take a pairing from uh, uh, Alex Roberts' Starcrossed mm -hmm. um, and just transpose them as the main characters um, here, and I think that would be really interesting too. Yeah, um, I actually I talked to Alex um, uh, because uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, Starcrossed's mm -hmm. uh, like in development name was the was Tension. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we interviewed Alex uh, right as the name was changing. Oh, uh, so we set up the interview under tension, mm -hmm. and uh, and and we we did the actual recording under Starcrossed, uh, which was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because I I talked to Alex about like why the name changed and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and Alex also like gave me her blessing on yeah, use the name tension, go for it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh that was my first thought when I when I heard the name of the game. I'm like, that sounds very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I love mm -hmm. I love the name tension for a game of uh where romantic tension uh and and literal life and death tension kind of go hand in hand. Thanks. It's very nice. Awesome. Um so how does the process of character creation uh reinforce the feel of uh tension and uh, set expectations for play. So um, there are like two main things that, that I can think about uh, that like, I know I was doing intentionally um, yeah. around the character creation of, of tension uh, to like push play forward. Uh, one of them is uh, the different options in the look section. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I briefly mentioned the killer is a, is a peacock um, yeah. in the last episode. Uh, and, uh, I, uh, thought so hard about the look and, and also the, the pattern and obsession sections, yeah. uh, but, uh, look sort of even more so, um, to like trying to like push forward this, like sort of view of this, this character. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it, it was a lot of, uh, uh, I, scrolled through all sorts of <laughs> images of uh, 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 Mads Mikkelsen and uh, Jodie Comer's wardrobe for the killer. Mm -hmm. uh, Mads Mikkelsen is, is Hannibal and Jodie Comer as, as Villanelle and Killing oh, okay. Eve. Um, uh, and uh, uh, 
scrolling through uh, uh the their their co-stars uh for the investigator looking at all those different hallmarks and then also just like being like I I, I did a lot for this of just uh reaching out and like poking either like my spouse or or friends or mm-hmm. um uh especially posting in uh, uh the brain trust discord um mm-hmm. uh the brain trust podcast is a, is a fabulous podcast they have a great discord um uh that a lot of people can do some pretty cool design stuff in um mm. and uh, uh i was over in that discord just being like what are things <laughs> uh, and having all of that sort of stuff rattling around in my head to be able to inspire me to, to push all that stuff. So that way I yeah. could really hone all that stuff in specifically around these different things like uh, uh, the empty pill bottles for the mm-hmm. investigator. Right. Um, uh, uh, as somebody who uh, is, uh, has empty pill bottles because of HRT, because of my trans status, uh, mm-hmm. and has empty pill bottles because of uh, mental illness and disability. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that uh, like matters to me, and it also says a lot about a person who like keeps those pill bottles. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so those pick lists were very specific things that. Um, I thought about as far as pushing things forward in play. Uh, and uh, the other thing that I thought about a bunch um, as far as character creation being having play push forward is uh, the selection of the tarot card. Okay. Um, so you by you picking the tower, it removes all of the other character options for the tower from being in play. Yeah. Um, uh, and that changes a lot of things. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, uh, it changes the the possibilities for how that sort of um, relationship web forms. Yeah. And a lot of play itself is pushing and pulling and, and tearing apart and rebuilding this web. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, I, w- I was curious uh, if you pull uh, both characters, both main characters, Arcanas as a relationship to one another, does does that normally like, does that work the same way as with uh, one of these NPCs or so, or does yeah. something special happen at that point? <laughs> so I was of sort of three different minds of, of that. Uh, yeah. One of them is, is have it just be normal. Uh, uh, have it that these characters had an established dynamic already mm. that then is, is changed. Uh, uh, by this encounter that uh, uh, like goes forward and, and shows that they now know these things about each other. Right. Um, uh, and uh, uh, then there was uh, telling you to redraw. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and I went with sort of a, a more, more of the, 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 the redraw sort of point. Mm. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to have the game be about the full relationship, right? Mm. It it can be a lot of fun to have a backstory between people, but I really like it when that stuff is all brought on screen. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So by not allowing the killer and the investigator to have that sort of relationship set up beforehand, Mm -hmm. Um, it, it really sort of pushes and reinforces that. Now, that being said, somebody who's listening to this and disagrees with my reasoning can, of course, change it. (laughs) (laughs) You have that option. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I really like that. I like the, uh, the thought that, uh, it's through all these auxiliary relationships that your, your webs, uh, your orbits, uh, kind of start, uh, interlacing with one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it makes it feel a little more serendipitous. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I really like, I really like the way that it, it works out this way. Um, gosh, yeah, it definitely could work the other way, but I, I like this, uh, this option as well. Goodness. Um, and I, I really like, um, now knowing 
that these characters are going to die, mm-hmm. or at least uh, uh, probably a good amount of them. Yeah. Um, I I don't know if I would approach it differently, but I might on a subconscious level, right? Mm. Because um, because I know that uh, my expectations of play are going to be, uh, I'm going to create these darlings, and we're literally going to be killing them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but which which is really fun uh, when, especially when you you read through and and you you state uh, pretty succinctly that this is uh, kind of a dark humor. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of story that we're telling. This isn't supposed to be like grim, dark, um, or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you're supposed to have a lot of fun with the the murdering and and whatnot criminality of it all, mm-hmm. right? So, so I I think it definitely does set that sort of expectation. Yeah. Right. Um, especially when you're creating some really cool, uh, you know, femme fatale grandparents. Yes. <laughs> now, because also the, the interesting thing also to the point of, of characters dying and things like that is that since you're like drawing cards from a deck, you might not even draw the card for a character to show up in a session. Yeah. Uh, and you have to, someone has to show up for them to die. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, so it's, it's pretty, oh my goodness. Yeah. So some of the ones that you love could go and the ones that you're not so... You're like, I, I could deal with this person, uh, you know, fighting the bullet, so to speak. Yeah. Um, One, once uh, once a character is introduced into a session, uh, they don't get like discarded after the scene they're in. They okay. hang out in a little tableau in front of uh, uh, the players. You, you pass it to the other player unless the ensemble is there. Then the ensemble just starts hoarding all of them. Yeah. Um, uh, and they get just start popping up in more and more and more scenes throughout like oh. that episode. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, so there can be characters that you might not like, you might be like, ah, I, I could take or leave mm-hmm. um, uh, like the, the workout buddy, mm-hmm. but then the workout buddy shows up in like three or four scenes and it starts building all of this whole thing, and it's yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Not now you can't live without them, and then, and then they then they aren't there anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. And also to that end, dead characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do little uh, flashbacks with them. Oh, fun! All of the dead characters hang out in this little uh, sepulcher, um, uh, and you can flip them face down to like have little flashbacks about them. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Oh, that's really neat. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So even though you might be killing your darling, they're not being fully removed from the story entirely. Right. There's also a mechanism for, uh, if you're playing in a campaign, to reveal that someone who you thought was dead wasn't. Oh, fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nice classic uh, soap opera or telenovela move there. Exactly. (laughs) I like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so what do you think, uh, I, I ask this of everybody and I get the most joy out of asking, uh, the developers of the game, this question, Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in the system? And what do you think is one of the best parts? Hmm. Biggest flaws. Um, uh, I think there's just a lot of writing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like it's so, so many names. Yeah, there's so many names. There's so much writing. Um, uh-huh. uh, like, uh, there are like multiple worksheets. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of uh, like front loading bookkeeping. Yeah, and like in play, it goes very smooth. Mm-hmm. But uh, it definitely can feel very daunting on the character creation mm-hmm. side, uh, and. Uh, it can lead you to uh, like rush or to be like, well, I don't know if it's worth it to go through all the trouble of making 22 people. Right. Um, uh, yeah. So, so there's definitely a bit of a climb at the start. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I can definitely see that. Um, I, I did enjoy creating all those people uh, mm-hmm. just because uh, I mean, 
character creation cast. That's what we do, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I really do uh, enjoy naming people. Um, and and it was it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. You know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is nice. Uh, and I I think for me is these are uh, and I, I know this would, this would come through in play. These these are very uh almost two dimensional characters side characters that mm-hmm. we're creating and i'm sure they get you know a, another dimension in play yeah right mm-hmm. uh but just going through the character creation system i think the two dimensionality of it uh is uh, it's not really a flaw it's, it's just a um i i almost want it to be longer <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i mean i i'm kind of uh, a little sadistic or or mm-hmm. whatever in that in that sense because i i just love the um i i just want to know more about these people mm-hmm. um and uh, it might be a little greedy i guess mm-hmm. because <laughs> i i know it would come in play and and i know i'm not going to be able to play this game right now but uh goodness there's there's so many interesting people that we've created here mm-hmm uh, but w- what do you think is one of the best parts then? You're you're making a lot of discrete choices, right? Like of like, all right, I yeah. have to pick this orbit for this person, this orbit for this person. Uh, but uh, it's all very like guided and contained. Yeah. Like um, uh, when you're picking your character, you never have to do any amount of picking moves from a list, right? You you just get right. all of them. Mm-hmm. When you're looking at all these different orbits um uh, they are these like tropes right yeah um and uh, like the one of the things that i i i really like the best about like tension character creation is that you can make like a lot of really cool complicated stuff yeah like uh there's this uh uh french game uh uh, Rene Le Jeu de Romant, uh, Rene, I haven't said this out loud and not typed it in so long. Uh, <laughs> Rene de la Jeu Romantique. Um, my French is atrocious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's severe apologies to any French person hearing me mm-hmm. or anyone who even just took French in high school. Um, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> know uh, it. Rene Le Jeu de la Rom- Romantique. Yes, that is the name of the game. Okay, there you go. And in it, you play generally like weird, crazy nobles. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're trying to get married. Uh, you have stats like rage and despair and things like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I would uh, run this for friends of mine, I would always try and make this like big family tree, right? Yeah. And uh, it, 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 it sometimes failed spectacularly Mm -hmm. (laughs) trying to do that. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, I have yet to, uh, not, not saying it's impossible because obviously, but I, have yet to see somebody go through and make all of the characters intention and not at least have like a, a good foundation to go forward from. Right. Um, when, when I, uh, when we finished, this uh process with all of these pairings my my one of my first thoughts was um i'm gonna need a murder board (laughs) uh to keep track of all Mm -hmm. (laughs) which which is very fitting for -hmm. this type of game honestly yeah um and i'm i'm sure it probably exists but i would love if, if anybody wants to give a shout out to me about this um i would love to have like a resource where I can input a bunch of names and relationships and and just have it auto create a murder board for me. I think that would be really slick. That uh, would be super slick. Especially for a game like this because my goodness, um I I I have a five player uh PBTA game that mm-hmm. I'm running. Um and I did a relationship web Mm -hmm. Uh, every player was connected to every other player so it was Mm -hmm. four connections per player yeah um and that was messy as heck Mm -hmm. uh this is just next level i have some programs that i use for database diagramming Ooh, because my my day job is i do uh 
uh, like data work and, and visualization and stuff like that. Okay. Um, uh, uh, none of them would do that automatically. Right. Um, but uh, a really good free one is called Miro. Miro. Okay. I've uh, heard of that. M-I-R-O. Yeah. Yeah. Miro boards are, are great for that sort of oh, yeah, murder yeah, board yeah. mapping. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Uh, there's also like draw.io and uh, some, mm-hmm. some other ones that uh, cost money. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And are more specifically databasey. But yeah. Yeah, I know I used uh, Google's offering uh, to create mine, uh, which worked out really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever flowchart uh, generic uh, Google thing that they have there, um, mm-hmm. that worked out well. Uh, but still, a manual process. Yes. I'm lazy sometimes, and <laughs> I want programs to do things for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. There was an initial draft of uh, the uh worksheets the major arcana worksheets that looked mm-hmm. more sort of murder boardy oh fine. um but uh it got a little too complicated yeah <laughs> so I, can I, went imagine. With, I went with the more sort of pared down approach for the initial one yeah um but uh, uh i'm very excited for everything that francita has planned absolutely mm-hmm. yeah no i'm looking forward to that yeah um so let's get into one of my favorite sections of the the uh, series, uh, the fan fiction portion of the yes. show. Um, so uh, we have to ask ourselves, how is this game going to theoretically play out? Um, and th- it's kind of interesting because uh, you mentioned the first thing that kind of happens is we draw a card. And that person gets murdered by the murderer, which would be my character. Well, uh, what happens is each of us gets five cards. Oh. And if you have multiple major arcana in that hand, you pick from them. Oh, okay. So I just used uh, a digital tarot deck to deal out some cards. uh, And in your hand, there are two major arcana. Uh Uh-oh. To give you options for who you want to kill. Okay. Uh, they are fun. they are uh the emperor. Okay. And the devil. Oh. So the emperor uh is one of your yeah. uh connections. James Belkin, the James boss's Belkin. boss, mm-hmm. who's an RP buddy with uh judgment. Oh, no. It's probably the GM. Being the, being the boss's boss, they like to be in charge. Yeah. Um so probably the GM Mm-hmm. Uh, should I probably real I grog kill off the GM? That's that's next level brutality. Mm-hmm. And then the, um, your other option is the devil, who's one of yours, the workout buddy, who is oh the workout buddy, yes, who is workout buddies also with my character's spouse. Okay, but all yeah, okay, so workout buddies with me and your character's spouse. Why would I kill my workout buddy? <laughs> oh, or. Am I working out with them to get close to them to build trust so I can kill them? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. I'm a bad person. <laughs> 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 um, let's, yeah, let's go. Oh, goodness. Let's, okay. Mm, let's go with the, let's go with the workout, buddy. Okay. Uh, Charlene Diego. Um, oh, poor Charlene. So. If we were playing, that card would be put up in the sepulcher and we would mark uh, the area of that character's uh, bit on the worksheet with a little exclamation mark to show that they're dead. And uh, you would uh, narrate like how and perhaps sort of why they died. But ultimately, this is someone you killed. Yes. And then after that, I would play a minor arcana from my hand that would sort of display the tenor of uh, how I found out about it and how I like mm-hmm. became involved in it. Oh, interesting. Which would be based off of the associated moods with the suits. Uh, so we have coins which are associated with obligation and bureaucracy and excess and uncertainty cups, which is like introspection and sadness and yearning and connection swords okay. is misfortune, wrath, decisiveness, power, and wands is inspiration, intuition, revelation, and passion. Oh, yeah. Goodness. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm, I'm imagining that, um, my character needed to, um, 
take out the workout buddy, Charlene. Um, mm -hmm. Gosh, because because my character's drive is that um, there's there's people in the world that need to be um, taken care of uh, to put a PG spin on it. Sure. Um, <laughs> and um, in order to better society oh, as a whole. Interesting. And so there is a uh, like a list ish of people that I have uh, calculated uh, okay. that if they were to, uh, you know, cease to uh, exist within the world anymore, um, things would get better. Uh, maybe not right away, but over time, mm. um, which which is like evil genius uh, uh, meets like, I don't know, uh, almost, almost like a future site sort of deal yeah. going on there, which that sounds like a really interesting, uh, you know, uh, tagline for a, a, a cool TV show about this. Yeah. And I mean, nobody said that we couldn't be a modern setting and you could be a wizard. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think some sort of like uh, innate uh, like view of the future based on probabilities of who lives and who dies of what the future is going to be kind of like. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, OK. So I'm thinking that this person, um, this workout buddy, um, eventually would. Uh, let, let's just go weirdly butterfly effect here saying <laughs> they eventually would have ruined someone's day, which had which would have been a complete stranger's day, which would have uh, cascaded into, um, like I don't know, some sort of like weird, uh, like multiple step, uh, thing that would have either crashed the stock market or, uh, you know. Uh, something something like enormous right something sure, really sure, bad yeah um I, i'm thinking that along that sort of lines right yeah so i so i had to pick that lesser of two evils mm -hmm. oh so then you had to kill your friend wow i had to Me. kill my friend yeah Me. okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so uh that escalated quickly yeah i have <laughs> um the uh uh, page of cups in the hand that I dealt to myself, which is what mm. I would play to talk about how my character got onto the uh, uh, thing, which is through my spouse, right? Yes. My spouse and this person work out. Uh, 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 maybe my spouse is the one who discovered the body. Oh. But uh, yeah, lots of, lots of sadness. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, that would then spiral into my character trying to, look into your character. Um, yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, we would have the, the first thing that you do is you, you play out a totally mundane encounter, like, like standing in line for coffee together. Yeah. And then you both realize who the other is. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is it, is it a matter of like you, your character knows I did it? Yeah. And my character knows that you know? Yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. This is very, very um, Moriarty and um, and Sherlock Holmes sort of uh, yes. dynamic here then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You definitely oh. can, can do that if you want to. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I, I imagine that... Um, my character would still like casually work out with your character's spouse <laughs> after this because they're still technically workout buddies. And then if I'm like, oh, I talked to my spouse about it and it's like, well, but they, they probably don't believe me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like what motive do you have? You're, you're a, you're, you're not a, you're not a, a, a murderer. You're a, you're a criminology professor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, she's nice. Why, why would you think that? <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. She tries to see the best in the world, mm -hmm. um, which is technically true. Yeah. 
Oh, Lord. I want to watch this TV show. <laughs> it's a good show. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Goodness gracious. So, um, okay. Wow. We went, we went places there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And so then gameplay would be us going through uh, uh, a number of scenes with these prompts uh, and all the scenes all focus on the two of us. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then at the end, there'd be a, a sort of crescendo cliffhanger, uh, uh, which if we're doing a one shot um, would probably be very large and bombastic. And if you're doing a, a campaign, uh, it could, it's probably still large and bombastic. Let's be real. Um, uh, but uh, it like flows into the next episode effectively. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. And in uh, future sessions, uh, the first scene, instead of focusing on the two of us, mm-hmm. uh, we would pick one of the orbiting characters and okay. we would have a scene focusing on that orbiting character. Oh, interesting. Going about their life. And then that character would show up more in that episode. Oh, very cool. Mm-hmm. And okay. that's also the way you would say that someone isn't dead when you thought they were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Uh, so where where does I, I guess we can uh, talk about this in ad, our advancement discussion, but I wanna I wanna kind of know where this story ultimately goes, um, which is going to be interesting. Yeah, is this definitely feels like a sort of thing where um, my character probably begins helping yours a bit, mm-hmm. but in a way where it's like, sure, I'll help you do this, but I don't agree with your methods, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's that sort of friction and then there's the romantic tension. Um, uh, and then, uh, 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 we, we've already instituted strife between my character and the spouse in that my spouse isn't believing, uh, uh, Heather about the murder and things like that. Mm -hmm. So probably wouldn't believe, uh, her about, uh, any sort of future vision either. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, so, uh, oh, which is so interesting because, like, I'm assuming that um, our characters don't uh, murder one another. No, in this, yeah, yeah, that that only can happen in a in one of those confrontation things at the end of an episode. Yeah, yeah. So I I can easily see like my character um, seeing your character's future and seeing that none of this would matter if you were gone. Mm-hmm. Which adds a really interesting layer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Once once you once you're in, you got to go all in. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Very cool. Um, let me get back to my notes here. All right. Um, I yeah, I think that's a that's a really good amount of fanfic that we have started here and my my brain is just teeming with excitement for a show that will never exist probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can get somebody to uh pay us to do an actual play. Oh, there you go. All right. Uh well, let's go ahead and get into our advancement discussion uh and take it up a level. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. Uh, In this segment, we normally cover character advancement and growth in the system, uh, but this game doesn't appear to have any sort of character advancement. Uh, So instead, uh, instead, can we talk a bit about how the story advances through play? Yeah. So I briefly talked about this before um, in that we have the uh, encounter in the very first session. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, that, that mundane encounter. Um, and then we have the path scenes and then we have the confrontation. Um, uh, and then in later episodes, we have the opener, uh, the thing that focuses on, uh, one of the side characters. Um, and it's even, I, I, I was thinking a lot about TV shows, right? Like this is a game Mm -hmm. heavily pulled out of my love for, for two TV shows. Yeah. So thinking about the opener, it's, it's, you have the open and then it's title card and then game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but, um, how the, uh, story progresses, um, is, uh, uh, basically 
action is always rising throughout play. Okay. Um, there's nothing, um, in like, there's, there's no mechanic for, uh, like lowering the amount of energy, (laughs) the amount of the the amount of tension (laughs) in a scene, um, uh, except for ending a scene. Okay. Uh, you, you only just keep building and building. Um, uh, uh, one of the uh, basic moves is, is called crescendo for that reason. Mm Mm-hmm. And so, uh, it's a lot of it is about just sort of like riding along the edge of your seat, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, until you get to, uh, the end. Okay. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, uh, characters, relationships can change, um, which is what you have that relationship section of your, uh, character sheet for, mm-hmm. um, if you notice there's, there's a whole bunch of extra blanks that we didn't use. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like through as sort of shown through like the immediate strength of the little fan fiction that we did. Uh, it's really easy to get pulled along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All because I didn't want to kill a, a GM. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And then uh, how does uh, how does a, a game end? then mm, yeah so uh there are the seven face down cards in the center or, or or smaller if you if you're doing a shorter game okay. um uh but you flip uh them all up um and uh once all of those cards have been flipped up you've done all of the scenes based on those prompts you do one final scene uh okay. the confrontation um uh each of the scenes end when somebody has run out of cards in their hand Mm-hmm. Uh, introducing NPCs, playing those crescendos. So it is just you're you're ratcheting. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're not allowed to progress until you've ratcheted more. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, the confrontation um, is very like loose. Okay. Both players reveal a minor arcana from their hand, um, and then just talk it out. Mm. Really leaning into that sort of GM full uh, stance. It's it, it's an amount of of epilogue if you're doing a one shot. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a like final cliffhanger <laughs> for mm-hmm. a long running game. Um, uh, and it's uh, specifically very open um, to like give players as much option as possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Um mm-hmm. I, I can see how the the tension kind of builds and builds and builds here. Um, when what is is that last scene the point where um, potentially like the um, the the less implied romance tends to happen then or yeah um uh it is a popular place to put it for sure <laughs> okay but. Uh, I have played games where uh, characters have made out uh, the third scene. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, you can just throw it wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I had a game where um, uh, the characters had sex, the last path scene, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then the crescendo uh, uh, confrontation at the end was sort of like the the epilogue, like, Oh, interesting. What now? Like, what, what, what was what was the fallout of all of these actions? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I I really enjoy, uh, especially with with the stuff that we kind of put down for for our characters and and mm-hmm. our um just just wild uh idea of of this uh, future butterfly effect site mm-hmm. um and, and having these characters falling for one another Mm -hmm. um and and kind of uh the the quote-unquote good guy Mm -hmm. kind of skewing towards uh the quote-unquote bad guy yeah you Mm -hmm. know and in in a in an attempt to do something for the greater good Mm -hmm. which oh it's just so wild yeah yeah it's also interesting because like the the pace of the romance is uh like fully controlled by the players right yeah there's there's no 
like I, I write a lot of games that involve kissing and all of that. And mm-hmm. in a lot of those games, there are like ex- explicit, like, and now is when you do the thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, intention, it's uh, much more like up to the story that you're telling. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's less restrictive. Like, like if you're doing a, 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 a slow burn enemies to lovers sort of thing, uh, uh, shout out to people who read that. Um, <laughs> I obviously don't know anything about any of that. Um, <laughs> then you have the option to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Oh goodness. Yeah. I, I really like that. That's in your control and you can go, uh, almost full star crossed, I guess, mm-hmm. and, and not have that sort of hit until the very end. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. or just, just go full in on it from the get go. Yeah. Um, and, and upend these, these fine folk slaves. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if the people playing want to have the two main characters rip each other's clothes off in the first scene, go right ahead. Mm-hmm. More power to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Uh, I I really love uh, everything that we've been talking about uh, in this game. I'm really excited uh, for this Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Um, can can you tell us a little bit? Uh, is there anything special that we want to keep a look out for on this uh, this Kickstarter? Um. So uh, there is a deluxe tier. Okay. Um, and I will uh, sign the zine, uh, wipe my tears with it. Uh, sleep <laughs> a night with it under my bed and put on some bright lipstick and kiss it. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, uh, and I will also uh, take uh, one of the Major Arcana from one of my personal tarot decks uh, and write a bespoke poem on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That sounds very cool. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a very personalized tier at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 Bespoke is maybe a little strong, but unique, unique, you know, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I will probably internet stalk whoever <laughs> backs those <laughs> just to, just to warn you, um, uh, uh, in a, just, in a good way. Yeah. In a, yeah. Cause I'm writing a poem for you. Um, exactly. uh, but I also, uh, might just write you a, a more unique thing about my own personal relationship with that tarot card. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I'm very excited. Um, I know the Kickstarter uh, just started yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, hello yeah. future us. Yeah, uh, future us. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and uh, wrap things up here. Um, is there is there anything else uh, that you want to say about tension before uh, we head out? The game means a lot to me, um, and. Mm. I am overjoyed that I got the reception that I got that pushed me to have this be on Kickstarter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I am like ecstatic about the art and layout that Francie DeSoto is doing. It's fabulous. Uh, Dominique Dickey is doing the editing, uh, dealing with all of my terrible spelling mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and their touch on the game will make it obviously better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just like plainly. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, I am really excited. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. As am I. Uh, so we'll have a link to the Kickstarter in our show notes uh when that is available uh which should be by the time this comes out yes um so uh adira thank you so much for joining us to talk about tension yeah thank you for having me yeah can you go ahead and remind everyone uh where they can find you online uh and any other things you want to plug uh this last minute of the the series yeah, um, my name is Adira Slattery. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Adira Slattery. Uh, you can uh, get my games at adira.itch.io. Uh, you can back tension on Kickstarter. Um, and uh, 
uh, you can uh, uh, give someone a hug. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yourself. Yes. Treat whoever, yourselves. Whoever is listening, you you deserve a hug. Give give yourself one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Y- you're special. Yeah. So so treat yourself. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, speaking of listeners, thank you so much, listeners, for uh, sitting down to uh, to tune in to us. Thank you, Adira, for sitting down to do this mm-hmm. uh, with me. It's been an absolute joy uh, learning about this game and and creating these characters. And now I'm going to have a fake TV show in my brain for the next who knows how long. <laughs> it's, it's like, Hollywood, come on, make this already. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, you, you were calling it the fanfic section, so I, I do expect to uh, see you put something up on AO3. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll quote unquote get right on that. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, no pressure, please. <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, we will see you next series in March. Bye. I thoroughly enjoyed this game and cannot wait to give it a try sometime. I was hoping to have the suggested name of this TV series recorded uh, that Adira had come up with uh, because it was fantastic. But alas, it was not in the waveforms. Uh, I do remember, though, uh, that she had said uh, Foresight would be a great name, and I thought it was phenomenally fitting. And now I am going to continue to pine for a TV show that will likely never exist. Uh, But before we head out and get to the outtakes, uh, just a few reminders. First, remember to check out my Chimera stream this coming Friday at 7.30 p.m. Central Time at twitch.chimera.games. We are having a lot of fun in the horror module, and things have not let up since our heroes fell into the Lost Undercity. But we are so close to the end, uh, to a point where they can actually relax with one another for a session. I am very excited for that. Another reminder is to check out Adira's Kickstarter for Tension, uh, which is linked in the show notes. And finally, if you have a moment after this episode, feel free to leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Stitcher, or the like, and help us out in the rankings to help even more people find the show. Uh, Also, these reviews really make us feel great uh, every time we read them, and that's absolutely something that we both need right now, so... Uh, feel free to leave a review for us and help lift our spirits. Uh, It'd be really helpful. Uh, I think I'm going to keep it fairly short for the time being uh, since life has been lifing at us hard lately. So enjoy the outtakes and have an excellent week off, everyone. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. 
If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Design Doc. Join hosts Hannah Schaefer and Evan Rowland as they redesign a role-playing game. Design Doc is an experiment in public participatory analog game design. It's fun, it's messy, and you're invited along for the ride. There we go. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. This is uh, this is definitely breaking from our normal format, but it's interesting because it's a two player game that we're doing it for. Well, it is technically optionally three players. Yes, that's very true. Doesn't mm-hmm. there? Uh, we'll get into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, now the last time you were on the show, um, I already talked about that just now, so I'm going to strike this from the record. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, uh, so we can go ahead and click on stop on this recording. Boop. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Waveforms. I like those. Woo. Waveforms. If, if I could only hear out of my right ear proportional <laughs> to my left ear, um, I, I'm not sure. It's probably, it'll probably pop into place at some point soon. Yeah, it's probably fine. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Um, okay, so I say that and I can't think of any of the things that I said at the time. Um yeah. uh uh but I know that I can just find the thread really quick. Oh yeah. Uh especially if you wanna edit out me not remembering my own words. No, we'll just we'll just keep that all in. Uh nice. including cool. the silence. Yeah, uh, of just typing away, trying to find stuff. I'm mm-hmm. sure. I'm sure our listeners are fine with that. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> our yeah. our ever patient uh, listeners, Ryan. Why did you leave? Ten seconds of silence. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. I haven't used the advanced. Wonderful. All right, so we can go ahead and stop our recordings.